algebraic sentence with an equal sign is called an equation. But if the sentence has a less than, or a less than or equal to sign, or a greater than, or a greater than or equal to sign, then that sentence is called an inequality. Inequalities are solved like equations. Your job is to isolate the variable on one side of the inequality sign. Let's look at a one-step inequality. X minus 4 is greater than or equal to 9. Using the same rules we would use in solving an equation, we'll add 4 to both sides of this inequality. That'll eliminate the minus 4 and leave us with our solution, X is greater than or equal to 13. That means that either 13 or any number larger than 13 makes this inequality true. To check our solution, we can take 13, substitute it into the original inequality, and check to see if it gives us a true statement. 13 is equal to 13. 13 minus 4 is 9. 9 is equal to 9, so it is greater than or equal to 9. So that part of our solution is correct. But unlike an equation, we can't check every number in the solution. We can't substitute all the numbers greater than or equal to 13 to see if they work. We can try one number that is greater than 13. Let's use 20, that's greater than 13, and see if it gives us a true statement. 20 minus 4 is 16. 16 is greater than or equal to 9. So that indicates our solution is correct. We can also pick a number that's not in the solution, such as 10 and show that it gives us a statement that is not true. 6 is not greater than or equal to 9, so 10, a number that is not greater than or equal to 13, is not in the solution. So we can be confident that our solution of x is greater than or equal to 13 is correct. This use of the inverse operation, sometimes known as the opposite operation, to solve inequalities works wonderfully, except in one case. If we take a simple true inequality, like negative 2 is less than 5, and multiply both sides by a negative number, say negative 3, we get 6 is less than negative 15, which is not true. So, in an inequality, when you multiply by a negative number, or divide, since division is really just multiplication by a reciprocal, when you multiply or divide by a negative number, you must reverse the sign to keep your true inequality. If we had to solve an inequality such as negative 5x is greater than 20, we would have to divide both sides by negative 5 to isolate the x. Now remember the rule. Since we're dividing both sides by a negative number, we have to reverse the sign, and our solution is x is less than negative 4. Here's a situation where I'm going to use an inequality to help me. I need to transport boxes of algebra books to the second floor using this elevator. But the elevator has a maximum weight capacity of 1,500 pounds. That means if we put more than 1,500 pounds in the elevator, it'll break. Now, I'm 150 pounds. Hey. All right, I'm 165 pounds. 180 pounds. In the interest of safety on the elevator, we'll assume I'm 200 pounds. Thank you. Each box of books is 40 pounds. How many boxes can I put on the elevator with me so the total weight does not exceed 1,500 pounds? We'll set up an inequality. Let x equal the number of boxes of books. We'll take the 200 pounds, then add the books, which weigh 40 pounds per box. The weight can't be more than 1,500, so our inequality is less than or equal to 1,500. We'll solve the multi-step inequality just like a multi-step equation. Subtract 200 from each side, then divide by 40. And x is less than or equal to 32 and 5 tenths. That's 32 and a half boxes. Of course, I'm not going to cut a box in half, so the maximum number of boxes I can stack in here is 32. Finally, the solution to an equation is, in most cases, a single number. But with inequalities, the solution is a whole set of numbers. It's sometimes helpful to draw a graph of the solution. Remember the first inequality we solved. 
the solution was x is greater than or equal to 13. To draw the graph, we'll put a heavy dot on 13 because 13 is a solution, and draw a solid line to the right of 13 ending with an arrow, showing that the set of numbers goes on infinitely to the right. All of those numbers covered by the line are part of the solution. There are a few variations when it comes to graphing inequalities. Besides greater than or equal to, the inequality could have been just greater than, or less than or equal to, or just less than, as in the case of the second inequality we solved. The solution was x is less than negative 4. Since this is strictly less than, the number negative 4 is not part of the solution, so instead of a dot, we draw an open circle around the point negative 4. Since every number less than negative 4 is in the solution, we'll draw our solid line to the left of negative 4, ending with an arrow, showing that the set of numbers goes on infinitely to the left, and goes up to but doesn't include negative 4. Inequalities are mathematical sentences where both sides are not necessarily equal. They're a lot like equations in the way they're solved, but unlike equations in the nature of their solutions. Practice solving inequalities, and you'll get so good that you'll be equal to none. Oh.